Good evening and welcome. Tonight I'm going to be reading to you this book about Norway. I'm going to use a little pointer to help me read and hopefully help relax you because I really love reading with pointers. Norway. I'm going to read to you these two sections, overview and a closer look. Let's dive right in. An Overview of Norway Located in Northern Europe, the Kingdom of Norway is part of Scandinavia and is known for its mythic trolls, stunning fjords, and epic Viking past. The country is one of Europe's most mountainous places, and with 4.5 million inhabitants, it has the lowest population density in the whole of Europe. Norway also has one of the highest standards of living in the world. Its strong economy secures its population material and well-being, and its extensive social programs and welfare benefits ensure that every citizen receives certain services. As one of the founding members of the United Nations, Norway has participated in humanitarian projects in developing nations and is committed to helping to resolve international conflicts. Oh, doesn't this look so serene? Geography. Norway's mainland covers an area of 118,834 square miles, with nearly 50,000 islands lying off its coast. The country shares borders with Sweden, Finland, and Russia. Nearly a third of Norway lies north of the Arctic Circle, and its coasts border the Norwegian Sea, the North Atlantic Ocean, and the North Sea. Mountains and Glaciers Norway's coastline is 13,624 miles long. Its coasts are marked by many fjords, making the coastline very rugged. Aside from fjords, Norway also has several glaciers. The largest is Jostedalsbreen, which occupies 189 square miles. Two-thirds of the terrain is mountainous, and only 3% of the land can be used for growing crops. At 8,100 feet, the highest point in Norway is Galdhopigen. Geographical Regions Traditionally, Norway has been divided into four geographical regions, Ostland in the east, Trondelag in the center, Vestland in the west, and Nord Norge in the north. If you know Norwegian, or you're from Norway, or both, feel free to correct my pronunciation because I'm sure that was very wrong, but anyway. Mountain ranges separate these regions. A land of broad valleys and rolling hills, Ostlandet is the most densely populated area of Norway. Oslo, the nation's capital, is located in this region. Trondelag is similar in formation to Ostlandet, with vast hills, wide valleys, and steep fjords. The plains around the city of Trondheim are largely used for forestry and agriculture. Vestlandet is characterized by fjords and snowy mountains that descend sharply to the sea. The largest city in this region is Bergen, which serves mainly as a commercial center. Nord Norgia makes up a third of Norway and is sparsely populated. Most inhabitants of this region have settled on the coasts, where fishing is a major industry. Recently, Sorlandet in southern Norway has been recognized as a distinct region. Previously part of Ostlandet, Sorlandet is the smallest of all the regions. It occupies only 5% of Norway's mainland. Nonetheless, it produces as much as 10% of the country's hydroelectric power. Seasons and the climate Despite its northerly location, Norway has a pleasant climate. In winter, all parts of Norway typically have cold winter climates with snow. The western coast has a marine climate, with milder winters and cooler summers than the rest of the country. Annual rainfall along the western coast can be as much as 80 inches. The temperate weather conditions along the coast are due to the North Atlantic current of the Gul Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream brings in warm water that keeps the fjords and harbors virtually ice-free during winter. Eastern Norway is sheltered from the coastal weather by mountains and has cold winters and warm summers. Annual rainfall in this area is less than 30 inches. In Oslo, the temperature falls to 25 degrees Fahrenheit during winter and rises to 61 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. From mid-May through July, the sun does not set completely in the part of the country that lies within the Arctic Circle. 
This northern area is called the Land of the Midnight Sun. Here, the long summer days gradually transform into long winter nights. Consequently, from the end of November to mid-January, the northernmost parts of the country do not get any sunlight. Plants and Animals More than a third of Norway's land area is covered by forests. In the southern coastal districts, forests are primarily deciduous, while forests of spruce, pine, and birch thrive in the eastern and northern districts. The Norway spruce and the Scotch pine are traditionally used as Christmas trees. Norway is rich in wild berries, including blueberries, yellow cloudberries, and cranberries. Cloudberry plants rarely grow in the wild outside Scandinavia and Britain. Arctic animals such as reindeer, lemmings, and wolverines roam all parts of Norway, as do elks and red deer. Salmon and trout overrun the nation's lakes and rivers. Large animals such as bears and wolves were a common sight, but their numbers have declined. In Norway, the cuckoo's call can frequently be heard from afar, even though this bird shies away from humans and is rarely spotted. Of the many varieties of birds found in Norway, ranging from arctic terns to common cranes, some migrate as far south as Africa for winter. History Arriving around 12,000 years ago, hunters and fishermen are believed to be among the earliest inhabitants of Norway. From 3000 BCE to 2500 BCE, more settlers moved into the area. These people farmed and raised livestock. The Vikings, the Plague, and the Unions. Gradually, these early settlers were displaced by more aggressive, warlike people. The Vikings, Norway's most notorious ancestors, dominated the land from 800 to 1100 CE. These bold warriors made their presence felt in the rest of Europe when they raided various settlements on the continent. Through many battles in the later half of the 9th century, Viking chief Harald Fairhair I established his authority over the coastal districts of Norway and began uniting the country under his rule. Relations between subsequent Viking chiefs and Christian countries, such as England and Normandy, brought Christianity to Norway. A descendant of Harald Fairhair, Olaf Haraldsson II, became king of Norway in the 11th century. He increased royal power and continued Christianizing the country. A plague called the Black Death struck Norway from 1349 to 1350, killing about two-thirds of the population. This devastating epidemic led to the decline of the nation's wealth and power. In 1380, Norway and Denmark united under Danish King Olaf. By 1397, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark had formed the Kalmar Union. The Norwegian economy and culture declined during the Union, and for the next 400 years, Norway was ruled by Danish governors. In 1814, Norway instituted its own constitution and became an independent nation. Its independence, however, was short-lived. Sweden attacked and defeated Norway within 14 days. Charles XIII, the Swedish king, became Norway's ruler, though Norway maintained control of its internal affairs. During the 19th century, Norway experienced massive growth in its economy, culture, and social systems. In addition, the country's population almost tripled between 1814 and 1900. Gradually, Norwegians gained a foothold in the struggle for complete independence, and parliamentary government replaced the king's cabinet in 1884. In 1905, the union with Sweden was dissolved, and Norway regained its independence. The Norwegian Throne after the end of the union with Sweden, Norway began to build on its newfound status as an independent state. Lacking a royal family of its own, the new Norwegian government elected the Danish Prince Karl as King of Norway in 1905. As the first monarch in the present line of Norwegian royalty, Prince Karl took the name King Haakon VII. The World Wars and the Great Depression During the period of 1905 to 1914, Norway enjoyed economic growth. Social democracy also took huge steps forward. Women could vote in local elections as early as 1907 and began taking part in national elections in 1913. By the time World War I began, Norway's merchant fleet was the fourth largest in the world. At the outset of World War I in 1914, Norway declared itself neutral. Almost half of the Norwegian merchant fleet, however, was destroyed by the Germans because the ships carried cargo for the Allies, who fought against Germany. 
the Great Depression that began in 1929 hit Norway hard, leaving one-third of the population unemployed. Even though the years between the two world wars were wrought with high unemployment and labor unrest, the country's industrial production increased by 75%. There's our rooster friend. Let's just ignore him. At the beginning of World War II in 1939, Norway again declared its neutrality. In 1940, however, Germany attacked Norway's major seaports. After two months of fighting, Norway surrendered, but the Nazi government, led by Norwegian National Socialist Party leader Vidkun Quisling, was met with strong resistance from the Norwegian public. Strikes and underground resistance movements against German industrial and military efforts in Norway began, but the Germans remained in Norway as an occupying force until 1945. By the time World War II ended in 1945, some 10,262 Norwegians had been killed, while many cities in Norway had been destroyed. After World War II, Norway began rebuilding its economy with the help of loans from the United States. The country especially worked to rebuild its industries. By 1950, Norway exceeded its pre-war wealth. You know, the rooster started crowing during my last video when I was talking about World War II. Interesting. From neutrality to activism. Norway became a founding member of the United Nations in 1945, and Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs Tryggve Lee became the UN's first Secretary General. Realizing that it could not remain neutral in the event of war, Norway joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in 1949. Norway also participates in the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which works on conflict prevention, post-crisis management, and arms control. In 1952, the Nordic Council, which consists of Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, and Iceland, was formed. This agreement allows citizens from each of the five countries to travel and work freely in any of the other four countries. Don't worry, it's going to stop soon. In 1994, Norway was invited to join the European Union, but over half of the population voted against joining the Union. Today, the Norwegian government is focusing on economic stability and social welfare. Thanks to the social welfare system, Norwegian citizens enjoy security through programs passed in accordance with the National Insurance Act, including pensions for the elderly and benefits for the disabled. Government and the Economy Norway is a constitutional monarchy. The king is the hereditary head of state and plays more than just a ceremonial role in representing the people. The Council of State, which consists of an elected prime minister and other ministers appointed by the king, holds executive power within the government. The country is run according to its constitution, which was drafted in 1814. With the exception of a few minor amendments, the constitution has not been changed since then. The Norwegian legislative body, which has 165 members, is called the Storting. The Storting consists of the Logting, or upper house, which makes up one-fourth of it, and the Udelsting, or lower house. For the bill to become a law, it must be voted on by the members of both the Udelsting and the Logsting. The monarch has veto power, which is the right to reject bills or courses of action that the Storting recommends. Since the union with Sweden ended in 1905, however, this power has never been used. National elections are held every four years in Norway. Political parties nominate candidates in each of the nation's 19 counties before each election. Based on the size of its population, each county elects a proportional number of representatives to the Storting. Eight representatives are elected by the whole country. Since 1965, no single party has been successful in gaining a majority in the Storting. Consequently, Norway has been governed by minority governments, or governments made up of many parties, none of which holds the majority of seats. Today, Norway has 24 registered political parties, each of which are represented in the Storting. A chief justice heads the Supreme Court in Norway. The Ministry of Justice nominates judges for the various courts, and these judges are then appointed by the king. Impeachment cases, or cases in which accusations of misconduct are filed against public officials, are heard by the High Court of the Realm. Industrial Resources By the mid-1990s, Norway was one of the world's largest exporters of petroleum, second only to Saudi Arabia. This industry accounted for 46% of the country's total exports in 2000. Norway has many river systems that lie on high plains. 
power plants and dams that have been built along waterfalls, rivers, and melting glaciers provide electricity for the country. Norway is Europe's largest producer of hydroelectric energy per capita and has more than 850 hydroelectric power plants. Agriculture, Forestry, and Fishing Farms in Norway are small and usually family-owned. In 2000, the domestic agricultural product made up barely 1% of the gross national product. Productive forests occupy 22% of the land in Norway, mainly in the eastern and central parts of the country. Most forest land is owned by individuals. The forest industry is Norway's third largest export industry. Along the Norwegian coast, where about half of the fishermen fish as their sole occupation, fishing is an important yet shrinking part of the economy. Between 1960 and the mid-1990s, the number of fishermen decreased to fewer than 24,000. Exports and Imports Norway's many exports include machinery, fish, metals, and metal products. Most of the country's petroleum exports go to nations in the EU. Norway's largest trading partners include Germany, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. Foreign imports to Norway include heavy machinery and equipment, as well as manufactured and consumer goods. Working life. About three quarters of Norwegians work in the service sector, while about one sixth work in industry such as manufacturing, mining, and petroleum. About 6% of the population is employed in the construction sector. The Norwegian economy also has one of the highest percentages of women in its workforce. The age of retirement in Norway is 67, and while unemployment has remained around 3%, the Directorate of Labor continues to support job seekers with relevant job training. People and Lifestyle Scandinavians are known around the world for having blonde hair and blue eyes. Although this is not true for all Norwegians, many do have blonde hair, and approximately 60-70% to 70 of the population has blue eyes. With the exception of the Finnish-speaking people and the Sami, the population of Norway is homogenous. The Sami are a main minority group in Norway. As Norway's first inhabitants, the Sami arrived in the country more than 10,000 years ago, probably from Central Asia. Today, approximately 40,000 Sami live in Norway, mainly in the northern parts of the country. The Sami parliament opened in 1989, thus giving the country's Sami population a voice in Norwegian politics. Finns first started to migrate to Norway in the 18th century. Some Finns came to Norway to seek a better life in the fjords of Troms and Finnmark, while others came to escape from fighting with Sweden and the famine that struck Finland in the 1860s. Today, a large part of the population in Finnmark is Finnish-Norwegian. The rate of population growth in Norway is less than 0.5% per year. Other Minority Groups Apart from the Finnish-speaking population and the Sami, other significant minority groups that have made their homes in Norway include Ethiopians, Pakistanis, Iranians, Swedes, and Danes. These groups make up over 6% of the population. During the 1960s, Norway welcomed migrant workers from Turkey, Pakistan, India, and Morocco, but a ban has been imposed since 1975. Nevertheless, Norway still accepts asylum seekers and refugees. The number of asylum seekers increased sharply in the 1980s, with most of them coming from Chile, Sri Lanka, Iran, Poland, the former Yugoslavia, and Somalia. New citizens can receive free Norwegian language lessons that are taught in their native tongue, Immigrants are expected to learn to speak Norwegian, and their school-aged children have to attend school. Family Life Norwegians have long enjoyed high standards of living. In 2001, the UN ranked Norway as having the highest standard of living in the world. This ranking was based on factors such as life expectancy, women's equality, and wealth distribution. Families play an important role in Norwegian society and tend to be quite small, often with only two children. It is very common for both father and mother to work. Parental leave benefits are applicable to both parents if both are employed, while unemployment, unemployed mothers can obtain a pregnancy grant from the government. The welfare system, which includes the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs and the Ministry of Children and Family Affairs, is funded through taxes and businesses such as the government-owned petroleum company. Recently, people have complained about the high taxes imposed to fund such programs. 
Participation in Norway's National Insurance Program is mandatory. This program provides services such as retirement funds, unemployment benefits, cash benefits for single parent families and disabled citizens, and job training. In the city. Norwegian cities are clean and organized. Parks are abundant and easily accessible. Even in cities such as Oslo, wilderness areas are never far away, and Norwegians often take advantage of them. In Oslo, due to the increasing number of inhabitants, traffic and lack of parking pose problems. In 1990, a toll system for cars entering and leaving the city was implemented. Funds raised by this program go toward improving the nation's roads and public transportation. Rural Living In many ways, rural life in Norway has changed very little in recent years. Norway is a mountainous country, and historically, access to many areas was only possible by boat. This isolation has created many different dialects and distinctive communities throughout the country. For example, the design of traditional costumes vary from place to place. The Norwegian government has created programs for training rural youths. In addition, development funds are raised to improve conditions in rural areas so people will continue to live and work in these areas. Education Education for all is the basic concept of the education policy of Norway. All Norwegian children must attend school between the ages of 6 and 16. Made compulsory in 1827 by the Primary School Act, these 10 years of education are split into three levels lower primary, upper primary, and lower secondary. Sometimes, in less populated regions, schools are so small that different grades have to be combined into one classroom. It is also common to combine primary and lower secondary grades into one school. The curriculum for students attending primary and lower secondary schools includes religion, Norwegian, and English. In addition, students may choose to study a third language, usually German or French. Upper secondary school spans three years, after the three years of lower secondary school. It is free, optional, and prepares students for higher learning or work. Students can opt for either general or vocational studies. Entrance to institutions of higher education is based on students' performance in upper secondary school. Except for a small number of private colleges, all higher education institutions are run by the government. Nonetheless, they remain independent of one another. The four universities in Norway are located in Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, and Tromsø. Founded in 1811, when Norway was still under Danish rule, the University of Oslo is the oldest in Norway. Four Nobel Prize winners hail from the University of Oslo. The Sami Curriculum In districts designed as Sami, a special curriculum has been developed to suit the needs of the Sami pupils. For students who are not Sami, the culture and traditions of the Sami community are taught within their curricula. The University of Tromsø has a center for Sami studies. Before and after school Since 1999, all municipalities in Norway are required to provide daycare facilities before and after school hours for children in the first four grades. These facilities have to abide by regulations and rules imposed by the Ministry of Children and Family Affairs. The Evangelical Lutheran Church The Evangelical Lutheran Church was proclaimed the official church of Norway by the Constitution of 1814. Norway's clergy is nominated by the king and the church is supported by the state. About 86% of Norwegians are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. Most Lutherans are baptized as children, confirmed at the age of 14, and married in church, though few attend church regularly. The nation's conversion to Christianity started with the Vikings toward the end of the 10th century. During their travels to other lands, including Normandy and England, some Vikings converted to Christianity. Then they returned to Norway, bringing this new religion with them. Religion is a standard part of the public school curriculum. Students learn the Bible through hymns, storytelling, and open discussions on beliefs and philosophies. The tenets of other religions are also taught to foster understanding and acceptance. Other religious groups in Norway include Free Lutherans, Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals, and Roman Catholics. A large Muslim community is present in the Oslo region. Ancient Norse Gods The pagan gods of the Norsemen of Northern Europe date, bat date back centuries. 
<laughs> date back centuries. I can talk. Some of the Norse gods include Odin, god of war and wisdom, Thor, god of thunder and storms, Frey, god of fertility and peace, Tyr, the bravest fighter among the gods, and Freya, earth goddess and patron of pleasure. Odin was the father of all the gods and a protector of heroes. During battles, Odin sent maidens called Valkyries to lead fallen Viking warriors to Valhalla. Valhalla was the great hall of Asgard, the realm of the Norse gods. Here the souls of slain warriors enjoyed a never-ending feast with Odin. Odin's son Thor was also very popular among the Vikings. Thor had control over the weather and carried a hammer which he used to make thunder. Norsemen used to scatter bread and pour wine on their fields as offerings to Frey when sowing their crops, since Frey was the god of fertility, and they believed making such offerings would yield good harvests. Today, Norwegians do not practice the old pagan religion, but they do enjoy the myths of the Norse gods for their exciting stories and poetic language. Language and Literature Language the present Norwegian language belongs to the North Germanic group of languages that began as a combination of dialects that were spoken in Scandinavia around the 11th century. Due to their similar linguistic ancestry, Norwegians can understand and communicate with people who speak Swedish and Danish. The two officially recognized forms of Norwegian are New Norwegian or Nynorsk and Dano Norwegian or Bukmal, also known as Book Language. Bookmall, which developed during the union with Denmark, is more commonly used in Norway. Newspapers and books are often written in Bookmall. This form of Norwegian is similar to written Danish, but is pronounced differently. Nynorsk, which was previously called Lansmål, was created with the mid-19th century by linguist Ivar Asen and is a blend of the several, the several dialects spoken throughout the country. Sami dialect. The Sami have their own dialects and are related to Finnish and Hungarian. Norwegian-speaking people do not understand these Sami dialects. The three main dialect groups are Central Sami, East Sami, and South Sami. Within these groups are subgroups that are peculiar to inhabitants of specific regions. More than half of the Sami population speak Sami dialects. Literature Bjornstjerne Bjornsson is one of Norway's most well-loved writers. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1903. One of his poems, titled This, was set to music and later became the Norwegian national anthem. Sigrid Unset won the Nobel Prize in 1928 for her historical novel Christian, Kristen Lavin's Daughter. Set in the 14th century, this international classic was made into a film in 1995. The saga is a type of literature that chronicles Viking history. Sagas consist of historical stories that were written mostly in Old Norse or Icelandic, and passed down from one generation to the next. Aside from historical accounts of Viking adventures and valuable insights into the various Norwegian Viking rulers, sagas also provide detailed descriptions of the Vikings' sea travels. Arts Architecture Due to Norway's abundant timber resources, wood plays an important part in the architectural design of Norwegian buildings. Homes in Norway are often finished with pine walls and hardwood floors. In the past, wood, which was easier to work with, was used to build common homes, while stone was used only by the wealthy. The well-to-do ended up in drafty stone buildings, while the lower classes lived in the natural warmth of wooden houses. In the far northern part of the country, due to the lack of available wood and stone, the Sami found ways of using turf to build their homes. Turf provided excellent insulation during the long, cold winters. Most of Norway's older churches are made of stone, while others, such as the famous stave churches, are made of wood. The stave churches. When the Vikings converted to Christianity about a thousand years ago, wooden churches called stave churches were built throughout the country. The roofs of stave churches are high and their interior walls are often painted with elaborate designs that include traditional rose paintings. Viking Age dragon heads and carvings on door frames, outer walls, and the wooden support posts called staves often decorate these churches. In 1979, the Ornest Stave Church is listed as a World Heritage Site by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization for its representative architectural design. 
folk art, orchestras, and film. Cities such as Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, and Stavanger are important centers for the arts. Oslo's National Gallery is the country's largest art museum. The Norwegian Folk Museum, also in Oslo, displays artifacts of regional and national folk culture. Norway's chief orchestra is the Oslo Philharmonic, while other orchestras can be found in Bergen and Trondheim. The Norwegian Film Institute, which marks and distributes Norwegian and foreign films, is located in Oslo. An international film festival is held in Hogesund each year. Maybe Hogesund, not positive. Painters. Norway has produced a number of prominent painters. One of the country's most well-known painters is Edvard Munch. Munch. Edvard Munch. Born in Lothen in 1863, Munch expressed intense emotions through his works, which influenced many painters that came after him. His most famous work, The Scream, was painted in 1893. Munch donated all his works to the city of Oslo before his death in 1944, and the Munch Museum was established in Oslo in 1963. Other Norwegian painters, such as Alf Rolsen and Axel Revold, have gained international recognition for their mural artwork. Delicate Rusemaling Rusemaling is a traditional Norwegian form of painting, meaning rose painting. Rusemaling features painted flowers arranged in decorative curls and twists. Inspired by a wide variety of painting styles, Rusemaling was popular in urban, upper-middle-class homes in the 1600s. Today, rusumaling graces common items such as bowls and plates. The patterns are usually passed from generation to generation, although contemporary styles are also created. A rich musical legacy. Ole Bornemann Bull was Norway's first virtuoso violinist. Born in 1810, he was hailed throughout Europe as the Nordic Pagnini. Bull performed throughout Europe, promoting Norwegian music to a wider audience. Edvard Grieg is probably Norway's best-known composer. Taught by his mother to play the piano, Grieg entered the Leipzig Conservatory in 1858 with the recommendation of Norwegian violinist virtuoso Ole Bull. While his orchestral works were influenced by Norwegian folk songs and dances, some of his most popular pieces, such as Opus 23 and the Holberg Suite, Opus 40, were composed for Ibsen's play Pier Gint. The Hardanger fiddle is a native Norwegian instrument that looks like an ordinary violin, but has a unique sound because of the additional set of strings beneath the ones that are played. This uniquely Norwegian instrument is used in folk music. Yoik is a type of folk music that is sung by the Sami. A type of yodeling that mimics wolves and reindeers, Yoik songs usually tell the audience a story from a highly personal angle. Leisure and Festival the great outdoors. Norwegians love the wilderness, which is often only a short ride away from the city. Even downtown Oslo is only a 20-minute drive from the nearest forest. The Norwegian government has passed a law known as Allemansrätten, or Every Man's Right, which allows people to go wherever they desire. Therefore, keep-out signs are rare in Norway. Many families in Norway own cabins that are inaccessible by car, so they usually hike to reach them. These cabins are rustic, and they often have no electricity. Instead, lanterns and candles provide lighting in the evenings. People in Norway cherish nature, and they think living in a setting without modern conveniences is a refreshing break from everyday life. Winter Activities On weekends in winter, the snowy hills teem with cross-country skiers. During Easter vacation, many Norwegians head off to the mountains. Some ski to remote cabins, while others take day trips to snow-covered hills. For lunch, they cook food over an open fire built on the snow. While still at school, children go on nature trails, where they are sometimes taught how to snow camp. Such trips provide time with friends, and the skills learned on these trips may prove to be life-saving at times when the environment is hostile. Summer Pursuits Norwegians enjoy the outdoors in summer as well. Instead of skiing, they often swim or fish. Another popular summer activity is hiking to the mountains. Hikers often search for wild berries in the mountains. Norway's forests and hills are rich with berries that can be used to make delicious traditional jams and desserts. Due to the nation's numerous fjords, lakes, and rivers, the Norwegian landscape attracts fishing enthusiasts and sailors. Socializing with friends When Norwegians are not enjoying the great outdoors, they are often visiting friends. 
Eating out is expensive, and most Norwegians prefer to spend time with friends in their homes. Exhilarating Ski Sports Considered the birthplace of skiing, Scandinavia is a winter wonderland. The need to get around in the snow gave rise to skiing, and the oldest known record of skiing is a rock carving at Rodoy of two people on skis that dates back to 2000 BCE. Today, Norwegians love to ski, and they are particularly fond of cross-country skiing. Competitive cross-country skiers are often accompanied by a medical team to ensure that training at high altitudes and low temperatures does not endanger them. Alpine skiing, or downhill skiing, is also popular, but this sport does not have as many enthusiasts as cross-country skiing. Ski jumping is a fam favorite sport among Norwegian adventurers. Charging down a long, narrow slope built at the top of a hill or mountain, ski jumpers jump off the snowy slope by straightening their bodies and leaning forward. The aim is to jump as far as possible and to land smoothly. In 1862, Norway held the world's first ski jumping contest in Tri Trisil. One of the most terrifying ski jumps in the world, the Holmenkollen ski jump, was built in 1892. The ski jump was rebuilt for the 1952 Winter Olympics in Oslo. The annual Holmenkollen Ski Festival is the most eagerly anticipated sports event in Norway. Summer Sports In summer, the most popular sport in Norway is soccer. Known as football, the game is played by children in parks and open spaces throughout the country. The Norwegian Football Association was formed in 1902, and the country's men's national soccer team qualified for the World Cup in 1938, 1994, and 1998. Their greatest success, however, was at the 1936 Olympic Games, where they won a bronze medal. The country's women's national soccer team has excelled in international competitions. The team won a gold medal at the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia, a bronze medal at the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, a silver medal in the 1991 World Cup Tournament, and a gold medal in the 1995 World Cup Tournament. Orienteering, a relatively new sport in Norway, is drawing participants from around the world. Practiced throughout the year, participants are placed in unfamiliar surroundings. Using maps, compasses, and their orienteering knowledge, they must navigate through checkpoints and finally to the finish point. Midsummer's Eve. Make sure I didn't skip a page. Nope. I just had a feeling I did. Let's see. Song comes often, or Midsummer's Eve is held on June 23rd, shortly after the longest day of the year. Midsummer's Eve celebrations began during the time following the Christianization of the Vikings. In the past, people believed that after midnight on Midsummer's Eve, witches and evil spirits roamed the countryside. To protect themselves, people lit bonfires. This tradition lives on today, although the bonfires are no longer lit to ward off evil spirits. Instead, they are cozy meeting places for friends and family to welcome the summer season together. Easter Week Easter is the time that Christians remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and give thanks for the sacrifices he made. Norwegians who choose to attend church do so on Easter Sunday or the evening before. Throughout Norway, the entire Easter week, from Palm Sunday to Easter Monday, is a time of recreation and holiday. Working adults and school children get a week of vacation, during which many Norwegians head for the hills or hike to cross-country ski. Some make day trips, others stay at cabins, and the more adventurous snow camp. Christmas Yule, or Christmas, celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. At home, Norwegians decorate windows with wreaths and advent stars. The Christmas tree, usually a pine or spruce, is put up on December 23rd or on Christmas Eve morning. Aside from common decorations such as tinsel, small Norwegian flags are sometimes strung together and laced over the tree. Christmas gifts are placed beneath the tree. Ringajulen, or ringing in Christmas, is a popular tradition in Norway. At five o'clock on Christmas Eve, the ringing of church bells can be heard throughout the streets, signifying the start of Christmas. Norwegians have a tradition of celebrating Christmas on December 24th instead of on Christmas Day. After a traditional Christmas Eve dinner, gifts are presented and friends and families gather round to open them. After this, they may attend a church service. Food Norwegians typically eat four times a day. 
They are among the world's largest consumers of fish, milk, and cheese, but they eat little red meat. The abundant berries that grow throughout the land are a favorite filling for many desserts. Breakfast, or frukost, is an important meal for Norwegians since they usually eat small lunches. Breakfast may include porridge or other cereals and open-faced sandwiches topped with jam cheese, cold meat, marinated herring, or smoked fish. Lunch, or lunch, is usually little more than a large snack. Common lunches include open-faced sandwiches made with cold meats, fish, or cheese. Some Norwegians favor a snack in between breakfast and lunch called vomidogsmat. <laughs> Middog, or dinner, is usually the only hot meal of the day and is eaten in the early evening. It can consist of soup, meat cakes, or fish balls, potatoes, vegetables, and a dessert. A later evening meal called kveldesmat may include sandwiches with tea or coffee. Norwegians love bread and usually use it to make open-faced sandwiches. Although there are nearly countless toppings available for these sandwiches, the most popular are brown goat cheese, liver pate, salted herring, cold meats, and an assortment of sweet spreads that include chocolate and nut flavors. Many kinds of cream cheese spreads containing everything from shrimp to vegetables are also available. Flotbrot is a crispy wafer-thin bread that is commonly eaten with foods such as stews. Other popular Norwegian foods are gume, a sweet milk dish that is eaten with waffles, or romagrot, or sour cream porridge that is often served at weddings. Beverages Norwegians love to drink coffee and fine teas throughout the day. Milk and soft drinks are also popular. Many Norwegians enjoy drinking beer, which is sometimes served with a strong colorless liquor called aquavit. Aquavit, which is made from distilled potatoes, is often flavored with caraway seeds. Aquavit and beer are enjoyed with many salted and smoked dishes. A closer look at Norway. As an affluent country with a booming economy and a highly evolved social welfare system, many people look to Norway as an excellent example of a developed nation. Behind this modern kingdom is a proud line of fearsome warriors, loyal citizens, and adventurous explorers. Norwegians, from the explorers to the resistance force during World War II, have shown themselves to be dauntless in the face of difficult challenges and unfavorable odds. The notorious exploits of the Vikings in centuries past are equally matched by the artistic achievements of Norway's playwrights, sculptors, and musicians. The discovery of Norway's crude oil resources in the 1960s has contributed significantly to the country's wealth enabling the Norwegian government to address the many needs of the nation. Adults and children alike benefit from the nation's insurance program, while minority groups such as the Sami engage in a constant dialogue with the government in order to reduce inequalities. Women in Norway have many opportunities to fulfill multiple roles and demands. In addition, the land itself, with cities such as Oslo, provides an enchanting backdrop for the bustling nation. Constitution Day the historical significance of May 17th. Following the defeat of Danish troops at the hands of the Swedish, Denmark had to hand over Norway to Sweden. Anxious to regain control of Norway, the Danish governor of... I just lost my place, even though I have a pointer. The Danish governor of Norway, Prince Christian Frederick, stirred patriotic feelings in the Norwegians by urging them to write their own constitution. A group of elected politicians, tradesmen, and farmers formed a national assembly and met at Eidsvallverk in April 1814 to draft a new constitution and select a Norwegian king. On May 17, 1814, they emerged with a newly signed constitution and elected Prince Christian Frederick as their new king. Sweden rejected this move toward independence and sent troops into Norway. King Christian Frederick was forced to give up his throne, and the Swedish king became king of Norway and took control of Norway's foreign affairs. Sweden, however, was willing to compromise by allowing Norway to live by its new constitution. May 17th, Norway's Constitution Day, is called Sittendemaja. On this day, the nation celebrates the beginning of Norway's independence. Sittendemaja. Sorry. The nation stops to celebrate. For Norwegian children, May 17th is a day filled with games, food, and parades. For adults, it is an important date in history and an opportunity to show pride in their nation. 
Throughout the day, bands play the national anthem, and Norwegians wear their beautifully embroidered bunader to the street parades. The actual events of the day vary from town to town, but the festivities usually begin with a flag-raising ceremony at a local school, church, or government building. Afterward, a, ch a children's parade starts with the children waving their Norwegian flags to the cheering crowd of onlookers. After the children's parade, each community starts its own celebrations, which may include speeches, games, contests, food, and concerts. It is common for several parties to combine into one large celebration at the center of a town or city. On the afternoon of May 17th, a citizen's parade begins. In the past, only adults took part, but children now participate as well. Girl Scouts, soccer teams, and religious groups are all represented in the parade. Dauntless Explorers Beginning with the Vikings, Norway has been a nation of explorers. Norwegian exploration continued into the 20th century when two adventurers pushed the frontiers of the sea. Roald Amundsen In 1903, Norwegian Roald Amundsen and the crew of six left on a journey to become the first to sail through the Northwest Passage, a route north of Alaska that joins the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. His 47-ton ship, called the Gjøya, was stuck in ice for two years. But the westward flow of the ice eventually moved the Gjøya, helping his crew reach Yukon, Canada in 1905. Amundsen continued his explorations. On October 19, 1911, he set out with four other explorers on sleds pulled by sled dogs to reach the South Pole. They accomplished the feat in just over two months. Amundsen and his team stayed at the South Pole for three days to record scientific data before returning to their base camp on January 25, 1912. In 1926, Amundsen, together with American explorer Lincoln Ellsworth and Italian engineer Umberto Nobile, became the first person to fly over the North Pole. Tor Heyerdahl Tor Heyerdahl wanted to prove his theory that people from ancient civilizations could have traveled across the oceans long before modern boats had been developed. He constructed a balsa wood raft in the ancient Peruvian style and set out on the voyage to test his theory. In 1947, Heyerdahl, along with a small crew, successfully sailed to the raft named Contiki from Peru to Polynesia. In 1969, aboard the Ra, a vessel designed in the style of an Egyptian reed boat, Heyerdahl sailed from Morocco to the waters near Central America. He believed this voyage proved that Egyptian civilization might have influenced the pre-Columbian cultures of the Western Hemisphere. Tor Heyerdahl led other expeditions that included sea journeys to the Maldive Islands, Easter Island, and Pakistan. During his expeditions, Heyerdahl devoted much of his study to the pollution in the oceans, and he wrote passionately on the subject. Fabulous Fjords Norway is known for its magnificent fjords, many of which stretch deep into the mainland. These fjords, which form natural harbors, make Norway's coastline one of the longest in the world in relation to its land mass. The warm currents of the Gulf Stream keep the natural harbors free of ice during winter, even in the parts of Norway that lie in the Arctic Circle. Fjords are narrow inlets from the sea that are flanked by steep walls that continue far below the water's surface. Fjords were originally rivers that ran westward toward the sea. During the Great Ice Age, glaciation created the U-shaped bottoms that fjords now have. As the glaciers melted and the oceans rose, the bottoms of the valleys filled with water, forming fjords. The Fjords in Norway's History Norway's fjord-pocketed coast has had a profound impact on the country's history. Because of its rough terrain, there was not enough land to grow crops, forcing the Vikings to go on journeys to find better agricultural land. In addition, numerous natural harbors created by the fjords ensured that good water access was never far away. Famous Fjords The longest and deepest fjord in Norway is Sogne Fjord. It is 127 miles long and reaches a maximum depth of 4,265 feet. Touted as the king of fjords, Sogne Fjord is the deepest and longest fjord in the world. Some of the waterfalls in Sogne Fjord are used to generate hydroelectricity. The mouth of the Sogne Fjord is north of the city of Bergen. Another of Norway's most scenic fjords is located in the Hardanger Mountains, or Hardangersvidda, in southern Norway. 
commonly referred to as the Queen of Fjords, the Haradanger Fjord is the second largest fjord in Norway with a length of 111 miles. Numerous fjords branch off this main fjord. In addition, Hardanger Fjord has fruit orchards and waterfalls that cascade down the steep mountain faces, making the fjord a popular destination spot for tourists. Fantastic Folklore Norwegian folklore is rich with stories of strange and enchanted creatures. In the past, people lived in small communities, and knowledge was restricted to the rural areas they inhabited. Folktales served a basic need for explaining the unknown, even today, folklores remain an important part of Norwegian culture. Enchanted Creatures Probably the most famous creature of Norwegian folklore is the troll. Throughout the years, several versions of this creature have emerged. Early on, trolls were thought of as gigantic, monstrous, magical, and always hostile toward humans. They lived in huge castles and prowled at night. When exposed to sunlight, they would turn to stone and burst into flames. Later, trolls were believed to be the same size as humans or slightly smaller. They were believed to live in the mountains and sometimes to kidnap maidens. They could prophesy and transform themselves into other things. In the past, many people believed mountains are actually trolls that transformed themselves. In modern folktales, trolls often live under a bridge and demand payment from people wishing to cross the bridge. Mm. One type of troll is the Nokken a water spirit that resides under waterfalls. The Nokken is an accomplished fiddler and can even teach people how to play the instrument. One female troll of Norwegian folklore is the Hulder. The Hulder, or wood nymph, is an ugly troll with a long cow-like tail that sticks out from under her skirt. Although many contrasting versions of her story exist, they all agree that she can magically transform herself to become stunningly beautiful and that she tries to seduce unmarried young men with her beauty. The holder's tail drops off when a man marries her in a church. Another type of troll, the Nisha, N Nisha, sorry, Nisha, is a short, human-like creature that is believed to live in barns. The Nisha is known to wear a red cap and have a long beard. Legend has it that if the owners of the barn are good to the Nisha, it looks after the livestock and said the barn in return. Inside the barn in return, similar to Santa Claus, the Nissa is traditionally believed by some to help parents deliver presents to their children. Some Norwegian farmers today continue to place a gift or a bowl of porridge outside in the barn on Christmas Eve for the Nissa. Henrik Ibsen, Father of Modern Drama Referred to as the father of modern drama, Henrik Ibsen was a playwright who blazed new trails in the world of theater. He is considered an innovator because he incorporated modern issues in his plays and focused more on character development rather than on plot. Born in 1828, Ibsen lived in a small lumber town called Skien in southern Norway. Ibsen's home life took a turn for the worse when his father went bankrupt in 1836, and the strain pulled the family apart. When he turned 15, Ibsen moved to Grimstad. Wanting to study medicine, young Ibsen worked as an apothecary's apprentice while studying for his university entrance exams. During this time, he wrote a play called Ketelin. Although the play was not highly acclaimed, Ibsen was not deterred. After failing courses in mathematics and Greek, he decided against studying the sciences and turned to theater. Ibsen worked in Christiana, present-day Oslo, and Bergen. From this experience, he acquired a sharp eye for theatrical technique and went on to devote his entire life to theater. Ibsen's Later Career Between 1864 and 1891, Ibsen lived and worked in Munich, Rome, and Dresden. Although he received an annual pension granted by the Norwegian state, Ibsen felt that the culture of Norway at the time was too narrow-minded. As a result, he did not return home until 1891 at the age of 63. Ghosts, The Master Builder, A Doll's House, and Peer Gint are some of Ibsen's most famous plays. Although his plays are sometimes shocking to the audiences of his day, Ibsen's critics praised him for a dramatization of characters that were realistic and issues that were familiar. Ibsen collaborated with Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg. Grieg wrote the music for Ibsen's Peer Gint, which became one of the playwright's best-known works. Some of Ibsen's plays also incorporate a Norwegian folklore, as was the case with Peer Gint, in which trolls play an important role. Oslo, an ancient city. 
The name Oslo comes from Old Norse and means the fields of the gods. The city was founded by King Harald Hardrad in around 1050. During the union with Denmark, Norway's politics were controlled by the Danes in Copenhagen, and Oslo declined in importance in, 18, in 1624. I promise I can read. A fire ravaged much of the city, but it was rebuilt, mainly of stone, by King Christian IV of Denmark, Norway, and renamed Christian, Christiania. In 1814, when Norway and Sweden united, the city's name was changed to Christiana. The Swedish spelling for Christiana. When the Union was dissolved in 1905, Christiana was again declared the capital of Norway. In 1925, its name was changed back to Oslo. A modern hub. The commercial and economic center of the nation, present-day Oslo, offers all the conveniences of a major city. Although it has a population of more than 500,000 inhabitants, the surrounding mountains and lakes give the urban area the added advantage of having nature at its doorstep. The city is located at the northern end of the Oslo Fjord and rests inside a belt of pine-clad hills that has many beautiful lakes and marshes. This surrounding area, called Oslo Marka, which means Oslo Field, and is dedicated to outdoor life. The area has hiking and skiing trails, a ski jump, and picnic areas. In the waters of Oslo Fjord, windsurfers, sailboats, and canoes can be spotted alongside fishing boats and barges. Oslo is the country center of trade, banking, shipping, and industry. Oslo Harbor is the largest and busiest port in Norway, and electronics, shipbuilding, and the manufacture of consumer goods are among the city's important industries. Completed in 1848, the Royal Palace is located on a hill in central Oslo. Renovated over the years, the palace has a ballroom with a 35-foot high ceiling. In Oslo, historical museums, such as the Folk Museum, the Viking Ship Museum, and the Maritime Museum, allow for visual insight into Norway's past. The National Gallery, the Munch Museum, and Vigeland Park are all also located in Oslo. Petroleum The petroleum industry in Norway only took off recently, but has become an important part of the Norwegian economy. Today, the nation is one of the largest oil exporters in the world, second only to Saudi Arabia. All of Norway's major oil discoveries have been offshore, and the oil is extracted at offshore platforms. Discovering Oil Oil exploration began in 1966, but the first well drilled was not successful. Three years later, on December 23, 1969, workers on a drilling rig smelled oil. This breakthrough led to further oil discoveries, and by the mid-1970s, a gas pipeline had been laid across the North Sea to Teesside, England. Production became so great that Norway started exporting oil to Germany and Scotland. By the mid-1990s, Norway had become the world's second largest exporter of oil, with about half of the country's export earnings and one-tenth of its government revenues coming from oil and gas. High rates of oil production can be sustained at least until 2020, uh -oh. and the country's natural gas reserves are currently estimated at 44 trillion cubic feet. The Troll Field One of the largest offshore gas fields ever found, the Troll Field is located west of Bergen. By the mid-1990s, more than 25% of Norway's huge offshore operations investment had gone into the Troll Field, making it one of the largest energy projects in the world. When it was when it was towered into wow, when it was towed into place in 1995, the Troll A platform was the tallest concrete structure that had ever been moved. The Troll A production platform reaches a height of nearly 1,550 feet and is 564 feet long. The platform is expected to be productive for at least 50 years. The gas production of the Troll field makes Norway the leading supplier of natural gas to the European continent. The environment. In Norway, there is little need for natural gas since most people use electricity that is produced by the nation's hydroelectric dams. Thus, the population does not burn much fossil fuel, which harms the environment. Resistance during World War II When World War II began in 1939, Norway declared its neutrality. On April 9, 1940, however, the German army invaded Norway. This move marked the end of Norway's neutrality and the beginning of a resistance movement against the Germans. Upon invasion Soon after the German invasion, 
King Haakon VII, the crown prince, and all the members of the Norwegian government went into hiding to avoid being captured by the Nazis after refusing to submit to Germany's demands. Their refusal spurred resistance among military groups and civilians. Sleds of Gold As the Germans invaded Norway, Norwegians sought to hide their gold bullion for fear that the gold would be used to fund the German war effort. The resistance movement aimed to move the bullion to a harbor in Molde, where it would be, then be shipped to safety. In addition to trucks, trains, and ferries, children on sleds were employed to move the gold. With gold bullion hidden in snowmen, children on their way to the harbor sledded past German soldiers. Outwitting Germany's Nuclear Ambitions The Germans set up a heavy water plant at Telemark. They had planned to use the heavy water, a substance that can cool nuclear reactors, to assist them in making an atomic bomb. Aware of the Germans' plan, Norway and Britain prepared a mission to thwart the invaders. On February 16, 1943, a British-trained group from the Norwegian resistance crossed a gorge to the heavy water plant, where they laid explosives. The daring saboteurs fled before the explosives went off, but when they exploded the facility, but when they exploded, the facility was severely disabled. After several attacks, the Germans were discouraged enough to abandon the plant in Telemark, deciding instead to move the stock of heavy water back to Germany. The resistance then put a time bomb on the boat that was to carry the heavy water. The boat was blown up, and the Germans never reached their goal of manufacturing an atomic bomb. The Royal Family A New Kingdom after being united with Sweden for 91 years, Norway became an independent nation in 1905. Because of the unions with Denmark and then Sweden, Norway had not had a king of its own since Haakon VI died in 1380. Thus, Norway asked Prince Karl of Denmark to be the new king of Norway. He was young and his bloodline was impressive. Although Prince Karl was willing to take up the role, he asked for a vote to be held to ensure that the Norwegian people wanted him as their king. Norway held a national vote, and the result strongly favored his, accession, his accession to the throne. Wow. On November 18, 1905, Prince Karl was elected king by the Storting. To continue the Norwegian royal lineage, he took the Old Norse name of Haakon and became Haakon VII of Norway. A Beloved Monarchy with a new name and a new throne, King Haakon VII began a reign that lasted through the two world wars. His strength and refusal to give in to the Germans was instrumental in forging a strong resistance movement in Norway. At the end of the war, 1945, he returned from hiding to Norway. King Haakon's son, King Olaf V, ruled Norway from 1957 to 1991. Norwegians liked his calm manner and his willingness to be like other citizens. He was even spotted skiing outside of Oslo without any bodyguards, something uncommon for many European royal families. King Olaf's son, Harald V, ascended to the throne in 1991 and is the present king of Norway. Conservation of the environment is his passion, and he was president of the Norwegian branch of the World Wildlife Fund before becoming king. His wife, Queen Sonia, was a Norwegian commoner who became the country's first Norwegian-born queen when Harald V became king. Royal Weddings In December 2000, Metzen married Hoiby, the crown prince's fiancée, made her first official appearance with the crown prince at the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony held at Oslo City Hall. Crown Prince Haakon married Hoiby on August 25, 2001 in Oslo Cathedral. On May 20. 4, 2002, Crown Princess Martha Louise exchanged wedding vows with Norwegian author Ari Ben in Nidaros Cathedral. The Sami The Sami make up the largest minority group in Norway. Living primarily in Finnmark, the northernmost region of Norway, they are known for herding reindeer. Sami people are also found in the northernmost parts of Sweden, Finland, and Russia from a nomadic to a sedentary lifestyle. The ancestors of the Sami were nomads who, when the polar ice cap retreated north, moved to northern Scandinavia. Descendants of the Sami continued their nomadic lifestyle in this new region following herds of reindeer. As time went by, they domesticated the reindeer. Eventually, some Sami became less nomadic, settling in one place as hunters or fishermen. The Norwegian Sami The Samiting 
The Parliament of the Sami serves the community by bringing Sami issues to the Storting. The Sami, however, were not always represented in government. Beginning in the mid-1800s, the Sami were encouraged to give up their traditional ways and language in order to integrate fully into Norwegian society. There was even a time when land could not be sold to them because they did not speak Norwegian. Since 1966, the identity of the Sami has been protected under Article 27 of the United Nations International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. By the mid-1970s, Sami, the language of the Sami, was taught to children in Sami schools. Common Occupations Today Today, the Sami work in fishing, agriculture, the service industry, and trade. They also make handicrafts. Reindeer herding is still an important part of Sami life, and this practice is now organized to prevent overgrazing of the land. Interaction with other Sami communities Sami people living in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia keep in touch with each other. In recent years, communication with the Sami in Russia has improved. Although cultural freedom has increased over the past century, the main issue for the Sami people is to maintain their traditional livelihoods and ways of life. Saving Norway's Lakes and Oceans Air Pollution The chief environmental issue facing Norway's lakes and rivers is acid rain. Acid rain is rain that contains high concentrations of sulfuric and nitric acids, which are produced by air pollution. Fish mortality as a result of acid rain is not a new phenomenon. Fish stocks were probably already dying in the early 1900s, but it was not until the 1950s and 1960s that people realized that this depletion was caused by acid rain. In Norway, the southern counties have been badly hit. Approximately one-third of the lakes are seriously affected. Presently, the northern parts of Norway are mostly unaffected by acid rain. The eastern region of Finnmark, which receives pollution from Russia, is the exception. Because acid rain is a major environmental concern, Norway has been a supporter of international emission standards that are aimed at reducing air pollution. Overfishing The oceans surrounding Norway have historically been excellent areas for fishing. With the advancement of fishing technology in the 1960s, huge catches were common and the fishing industry in Norway was generally a free-for-all. By the 1970s, the size of the catches had declined, and the herring species was almost wiped out. In 1977, to stop overfishing, the Norwegian government established a 200 nautical mile protected zone off the Norwegian mainland. Norway now makes fishing quota agreements with the European Union, Russia, Iceland, Greenland, and Poland to ensure that the fishing industry does not deplete the oceans of their stocks. Diseases Another environmental concern is caused by aquaculture, or the fish farming industry. Because fish in these farms are confined to small areas, there is a greater possibility that they will contract diseases. The concern is that some of these diseased fish might escape to the sea and spread diseases to the wild fish stocks. Traditional Clothes Bunader The traditional costume of Norway is called the bunad. The word bunad is an Old Norse word meaning clothing. Bunader were fairly common as everyday outfits in some regions of Norway until World War II. Now they are typically worn on special occasions such as national holidays and weddings. In Norway, there are hundreds of different bunader, each representing a different region. The Women's Bunad A woman's bunad consists of a full dark skirt, an apron, a silk scarf, and a bodice. Married women may also wear short capes. The costumes come in striking colors and have elaborate embroidery. Differences in embroidery correspond to the different periods in Norwegian history. One other important part of the outfit is the silver jewelry that complements the ensemble. The jewelry is worn on blouses, bodices, and skirts. Black leather shoes with silver buckles and dark stockings are commonly worn with the outfit. Almost every Norwegian woman has a bunad that has been usually passed down from mother to daughter. The man's bunad. A man's bunad consists of a jacket worn over a vest, a cap, dark breeches, and socks. Breeches and jackets are usually made of fine black cloth, and the jacket is worn open to show the decorative silver brass buttons on the vest. Men do not wear their bunader as often as women wear theirs. Norwegian Sweaters 
Norwegian sweaters were born of necessity due to the country's cold winter temperature. Symbolic patterns are often used in sweater design. For example, one sweater pattern features the Gothic arches from the Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim. Contrasting colors such as white on black or blue, or black on blue, black or blue on white, are often used to make symmetrical designs. Some sweaters may have buttons or clasps on the front that are made of pewter and often feature intricate designs. Hats and mittens are also made using the same designs as sweaters. The Valorous Vikings The Vikings derived their name from the word for pirates in the early Scandinavian languages. Formidable fighters, they raised and looted entire villages throughout Europe from 800 to 1100 and were possibly the most feared and barbaric warriors of their time. Within Scandinavia, however, the Vikings were a peaceful people. Mostly farmers, Viking men, sometimes called Norsemen, left Scandinavia due to overpopulation. Viking homesteads The Vikings' homes were made of timber and roofed with turf. Viking settlements were centered around a longhouse, a barn-like structure where the family lived. Other buildings included storehouses and workshops, which were usually situated close to water, the community's main mode of transportation. Innovators in Sea Transportation The Vikings were excellent seamen. They were innovators in boat designs and excellent ocean navigators. Until the Viking period, boats had been primitive and not very seaworthy. The Vikings invented a sturdy type of vessel called a longboat that could cut through deep seas and travel easily into shallow waters. Using longboats, they could land on shores with great speed during surprise attacks and then retreat before any retaliation. Viking raids decreased when the Vikings converted to Christianity. By 1100, the raids ceased altogether. Although fearsome, the Vikings were indirectly responsible for promoting trade throughout Europe. In addition, the design of the useful Viking longboat was adopted by other Western explorers, making further sea exploration possible and opening up cultures that had been unknown until then. Viking Words Vikings raided and settled in large areas of Eastern and Western Europe, leaving traces of their presence that are still felt today. Some of the Viking colonies established in Britain still have Viking names such as Brimtoft, Grimsby, Thorsby, and Langtoft. Other words that are derived from the Viking languages are welcome, egg, and sister. Vigeland's Artistry Adolf Gustav Vigeland is Norway's most famous sculptor. His greatest artistic achievement and one of Norway's major attractions is Vigeland Park in Oslo. Gustav Vigeland was born on April 11, 1869, to a farming family in Mandal, Norway. As a child, he showed great talent as a carver, and at the age of 14, he was apprenticed to a wood carver in Christiana. After the death of his father, he had to return to Mandal to take care of his family. Unable to give up his dream, Vigeland continued to read about the arts and sketch, sketch statues. When he turned 19, he finally returned to the capital. Brynjolf Bergsley, a sculptor in Christiana, was impressed by Vigeland's sketches and offered him training. A year later, in 1889, Vigeland held his first exhibition. Vigeland also trained in Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. He started out working in the classical genre, and his early works, mostly busts and reliefs, are found in the Vigeland Museum in Oslo. From 1897 to 1902, Vigeland worked on restoring the Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim. There he carved gargoyles to replace sculptures that had been damaged over time. Later, he was drawn to the more naturalistic movements in art. Vigeland's Monumental Achievement The city of Christiana recognized Vigeland's talents and, in 1902, provided him with a studio. In return, Vigeland donated all his works, including his original models and sketches, to the city. For Vigeland, this was a dream come true, and in 1924, he began working on the sculptures that are now displayed in Vigeland Park. Today, Vigeland Park is filled with almost 200 works made of granite and bronze that together include more than 600 figures. The sculptures are often entwined human forms, lizards, or other animals. Standing at a height of 57 feet, a stone monolith is located in the center of the park. The monolith features carvings of 121 entangled bodies that seem to be on a quest for the top. To complete this giant pillar, three carvers had to work daily from 1929 to 1943. 
Gustav Wickland worked on the park figures for almost 20 years before passing away in 1943. Women in Norway During the Viking era, women gained higher status in society as they were expected to run the farms while their husbands were away. In modern times, Norway has strived to improve women's rights, and the nation is now considered at the forefront of promoting equality for women. Women in Politics One major reason for Norway's reputation as a leader in women's rights is the success of women in Norwegian politics. Gru Harlem Brundtland, who was elected in 1981, was both Norway's first female prime minister and the country's youngest prime minister. In the 1997 general election, 36% of the representatives elected to the Storting were women. Women's Rights Norway instituted the Gender Equality Act in 1978. This act promotes equal opportunities for women at work. One ruling made under the act is that the only hiring for actors and models, that only hiring for actors and models can be gender specific. In order to enforce the rulings made under the act, Norway's government includes the Gender Equality Ombud. An inspiration to women athletes. Norwegian long-distance runner Greta Weitz was the world's leading female runner from the late 1970s to the 1980s. In 1979, she became the first woman to complete the New York Marathon in two and a half hours and went on to win the New York Marathon nine times. Weitz broke several records and remains an active promoter of women's sports. The 4.3-mile Greta Weitz Marathon is held annually in Oslo. Still room for improvement. The average wage for women in Norway is still significantly lower than for their male counterparts. Most women typically enter the workforce in traditionally female fields, such as nursing or social welfare. As in other modern societies, the sharing of housework within the family has improved in recent years, although women still typically do more housework than men. Although there is a definite room, although there is definite room for improvement, Women in Norway have made important steps toward equality throughout the years. And I believe that's the end. Yeah, we don't need to read Relations with North America. That seems kind of excessive. So anyway, that's the end of my reading tonight. I hope you found it very relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, good, good